three one. Call the meeting to order. It's one o'clock, and I'll now read the land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge that the township of Asphodel Norwood is located on the Treaty Twenty Mississauga territory and the territorial and the traditional territory of the Mississauga and Chippewa nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Kirk Lake, Hiawatha, <clears throat> Alterville, Scugog Island, Rama, Bozale, and Georgina Island's First Nations. The Township of Asphodel Norwood respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain the responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. And we'll now take a moment of silent reflection, thinking of the meeting ahead. And I'll ask council members if they have any uh, declarations of pecuniary interests or matters and state the interest now or at the time the matter arises at the council meeting. Um, approval of the agenda as amended. And moved by Councillor Ward, second by Councillor Walsh. Any discussion? All in favor? Motions carried. Approval of the minutes of council meeting minutes of September 26, public hearing meeting minutes of September 26, and the public council meeting on October 15th. I'm looking for a motion to adopt the minutes of September 26 on the public hearing and the special council meeting on October 15th. As presented. As presented, Deputy Mayor Burt. And Councillor Hodge Greaves, any discussion? All in favor? Motion's carried. And um, moving along to the consent agenda. Business arising. Pardon me? Business arising. Oh, sorry. Any business arising from the minutes? I'm sorry. None. Okay, moving along to the consent agenda. Looking for a motion to approve the correspondence items C1 through C6, the Trails Committee minutes of June 6, and the Cultural and Heritage Committee meeting minutes on September 7th, and Library Board minutes on September 11th as circulated or amended. Um, as uh, circulated, I would comment on C1 and C3. C1 and C3. Can I add to that? Yes. The comment on C4. C4. And you move them, uh, Paul? Uh, yes, I do. I can second and, that, yeah. Deputy Mayor Burt, uh, second them. Uh, you want to discuss C1 now? Uh, yes, on C1, I just want to, just a comment to the library in general. I was looking over the numbers and the uh, number of activities and programs that they have been doing, and I just wanted to, uh, if Deputy Mayor Burt, I think she sits on that committee. Um, if you could extend, um, well, congratulations to the library and a job well done. Thank you, I will. Uh, yeah, very well oiled machine in there now and uh, tons of people coming through the doors. Yeah, it's great, it's great to see, yeah. yeah, it's really good to see. And C3? Uh, yes, for the C3, it was Wes Lincoln. And I was wondering if, um, if Candace may give a staff perspective on C3, it's regarding the uh, condo development and if they, they have to go back to the game if um, for condo planning, if something's amended. And I saw that it was in our uh, consent agenda and I wanted to see what your thoughts were on that and how that would affect our community. Um, well, uh, the municipality of West Lincoln um, is quite right. The There is significant uh, drain on resources from both 
I guess it would be a municipal perspective as well as a development perspective if they have to resubmit the entire site plan control process again and start back. Um, and just base, you wouldn't want to call it another layer of red tape because that layer already exists. It's just going through that same layer twice, um, which it's also costly um, on the developer and costly on, on the municipality. And most municipalities, as we know, are short on staffing. And when they have to go back and look at the same file multiple times, it's definitely uh, Myers down the process. If I may follow up, um, mm -hmm. so how long would that process again be to resubmit all of that? Are we look, we're looking like a you know eight to twelve month timeline, or mm -hmm. would the timeline be? It's more of a staff time, right? It's I wouldn't time. suspect it would be like eight to 12, 12 months, but it would all depend on the size of the municipality and the size and how complex the file is. Mm -hmm. But I would think on average you would be looking at minimum of three months, okay. yeah, maximum delay. of of six delay, yeah. So if we're looking at this piece of correspondence, would there be any recommendations going forward of, you know, you know, whether we, you know, support this support. letter or if we just receive it for information and, and have maybe something come forward at a later date? Well, since you pulled it, you can send it to correspondence for action and then adopt a motion of support. Okay. If if you would like, then that that's fine. We'll just address it later on in the meeting. Okay. Um, I guess I'll move that to that, please. Okay. And moving on. C4. C4. Uh, thank you, Green Mayor. Um, yeah, the, the letter is, <clears throat> is in your package about the social and economic prosperity review. And certainly, um, if you look down in the second paragraph, it says in last year, municipalities spent $3.8 billion more than they received for things like social housing, long-term care, uh, ambulance, social services, and child care. And certainly I was in joint services last week and, and it's um, around the, the um, budget for that for the county and the city and uh, the budget numbers are high. Oh, yeah. And certainly, you know, the, the letter, in my opinion, um, supports that to, to a T. And I don't know, Candace, if you have any more to add to the letter, but um, I would, want to pull that for correspondence for action as a letter of support as well. So okay. does that sound good? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions on the course the correspondence? All in favor of that motion? <laughs> Motion's carried. Delegations. We have a delegation with us today, Mr. Daryl Hain. Uh, representing Norwood Minor Softball and Beehive Outdoor Rink. Go ahead, Daryl. Thanks for having me again, folks. Uh, I just I'll do a quick recap of uh, the arena or the outdoor rink and what it got used by last year was non-traditional skating families. Um, it wasn't as busy as what maybe Havelock was, but it was used daily. It was used regularly by people. Um, it was used by people that weren't necessarily involved with minor hockey here, minor hockey anywhere else. It was just simply used by skating the kids learn how to play the game and all that. So um, I come up there every day about 8 o'clock, 8.30 to flood it or provide maintenance to it. And there was almost marks and scratching. And arena staff were aware that it was used. Um, we lost about 10 to 15 days compared to Havelock and Hastings due to weather and unforeseen circumstances we had, but we got that perfected for this year, so we should be off to a better start this year. Um, why I'm here um, asking for uh, a portion of my insurance money, I, I realized the letter last year said it was a one-time deal, and I do appreciate last year as well. Um, all the money is filtered through minor softball. That's why minor softball here as well. I did that so I didn't have to open other bank accounts and there was an easy way to track that money wasn't being embezzled or it wasn't being, there's actually an account and all that. So the money's going to a use of one or the other. Uh, my cost for the arena is about $1,700 a year after the first year. I need to buy a $550 tarp, which I already have, and I have to buy about $1,100 in insurance plus HST, so it's about... I think I asked for 600. They said that you could only do 500 as a donation, I think was what we're at. Um, the reason we're asking, uh, so baseball did substantial fundraising combined with the arena. Uh, we spent $20,000 last year on upgrading equipment, jerseys and all that. We were able to raise $10,000 in fundraising, which, which put us behind a little bit. Something that happened this year again, and it was something that should have happened. 
This is the first time in a few years we got charged for the diamond use, which we understand we have to be charged. I think the bill was $2,500. But during COVID and all that, we were still trying to run and maintain. We weren't charged. So that was an extra cost that we had to handle there. Um, we bought new bases. Uh, there was an agreement. Seamus is aware of it. I don't know if this committee is that uh, we bought new bases and receivers that would be utilized by the town if it was rented out and by baseball. The town was supposed to pay for half, according to Seamus. There was an agreement there. Uh, the cost was up. We'll get the exact over on $1,500 for that, but we haven't sent the town a bill for that as of yet either. Okay, so, but we did spend that money. Um, baseball registration was up this year, but unfortunately, we were we were trying to track the Pavlock, who charges $80. We lose money at $80, but we had a bit of a bankroll. We did some fundraising. $80 runs a loss by the time you pay for the insurance, the diamond and the equipment and all that, you cannot recover. Not a huge loss, but it does run a loss. We're gonna put the price up this year. We agreed there's no choice, we have to. But because of the last two years with the COVID and all that, we thought if we left it the same and we had the bank count to accommodate this. And with the graciousness of the committee, the township to help us to keep this rink going, we'd be able to, uh, to do that. Um, Baseball or myself, we did donate to the fire department last year. We gave them two hundred dollars after the New Year's Eve party. Five hundred dollars went to figure skating, and one hundred dollars went to food bank. We did donate uh, one set of lead tickets at a value of three hundred eighty dollars to the Legion for their food bank drive. And baseball personally donated to uh, two golf tournaments: one for the raise money for the hospice, and one to uh, for uh, camp that's kids with cancer. And we've purchased the reef for the Legion for the parade there. So we had to save money. We just spent it poorly on different stuff. That's why we're here asking for money from you now, just to trade hands, I guess. So <laughs> we wanted to be a committee that give back. Um, I believe this would be the last time I'm going to have to ask for anything. Uh, last year, um, for those that don't know, we, we set the arena up. At the back of the infield, it just didn't work. It was it just was never going to work, and the temperatures weren't cold enough to freeze the ice to make it even. So you could try to call me that. So we had to move it. A couple of kids come and demoed it. The one kid now he's a good kid. He come and help me for the rest of the year. He was committed to heat scraping, flooding, all that. So he paid his dues. He will be helping me again this year. He enjoyed it. Well, we just got off to a bad start. We were thinking about putting up a donation box. We were going to do something for family day. Obviously, family day last year was eight degrees and nobody was up there. Uh, one thing I do notice, because I did compare myself to Hastings and Havelock, uh, we do have a great location, well lit. We got the dugouts, but it is very hard to get to for kids to walk from maybe the subdivision up behind the water tower. It is quite a, a stride to get there. So it's more of a commuter arena than the one in Havelock that's down by the public school and the one in Hastings is right downtown but it did get used and I think we will grow on that this year. So long and short of that portion, I'm just asking if there was consideration, if I could get a $500 donation to run part of the insurance or pay for part of the tarp, that would be uh, appreciated. Um, do you want me to carry out the next issue about the, the canteen building and all that too, or? Yes, carry on. Carry on. Um, the building up here, uh, we would like to convert it into a canteen, okay? Obviously, we realize that would have to be approved by the town. Um, just to give you a few numbers, I spoke, there's one identical to that in Havelock, right beside the ballpark between there. Um, it is under contract. The person that runs it has to bid to run it through the township. Uh, he makes about two or $300 a night when baseball is active there. Um, the advantage for us to run something like that there. If it's allowable and we're allowed to maintain it is we could run it during certain hours to accommodate a skate park, the splash pad, the basketball park and all that. Um, I think we're capable of staffing it. I don't think we would sell uh, deep fryer food or anything like that yet, but we would sell drinks and snacks that are able to move in and out of the, of the building of that time. Right where, for those that know the building, right where there's a board that has all the sponsors that would come down, that would be where we'd have a door there to open and close our business there. So, um, but obviously, um, the building was built for baseball, but it's owned by the town. We understand that. So, uh, right now, we've currently taken our stuff out of it because we do have to renovate to accommodate, um, you know, just restructure where we're going to store stuff. It looks like it is, anyone's been in there, it's a disaster most of the time. So, we're fixing that. 
Um, it's a great building though. Uh, we actually used, we put the net up and used the batting machine. Baseball had 180 players this year with team ball and baseball combined. So we have grown again. And the committee, uh, which is Vicki King and Larissa and Amanda Howard, and uh, I think there's eight other people on this committee this year. So it's went from uh, myself and two other people to a full-fledged staff that I'll be retiring from next year. You always say that. <laughs> so that's why we're here asking for those options to do that. If we could make $300 uh, a game on that, there it would be money that would obviously we'd be able to pay for our own insurance. We would look like people here begging, but we would also be able to uh, give back the community a bit more again too, which uh, this committee seems to like to do. Any questions? Is that everything here? Right. Any questions? Is that enough? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Councilor Walsh? You know, just for you, Mayor, um, just so I'm clear, on the canteen, you would basically, would be looking to, we would contract and we would run it. We would, we would we would pay you a fee, I guess, a yearly fee to run the canteen. Okay. And then whatever profits you generate are yours. We would still keep her, yeah. Put back in the baseball. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. And I like the idea that you said that you would be open for splash pad. Yeah. Well, we'd be for a part. We would have to come back and have to agree. Obviously, we'd have to pay staff to run it too, but we'd have to make an agreement. We want it open. Like, I don't think it needs to be open at eight o'clock. It could be open at, like, you know, from one till whatever. You know, do we do it every day? Do we do it, you know, Thursdays a week, Sunday, whatever, something like that? You know, okay. if it's 30 degrees, should it be open? Sure. Councillor uh, Moore. Uh, thank you, Three Mayor. Um, thank you for your presentation. And thank you for giving some stats on the users of the arena at the outside ring because that was one thing that I was wondering because it was a terrible year for fun. Yeah, it was hard. And yeah. I did know about some of the yeah. problems that you had with yeah. some vandalism, but yeah, um, yeah like, it, wow, you guys are doing a lot of work. I can say that. Yeah. And good to have 180 players in the baseball um, yeah. league. That also is impressive. So that's just a comment. Is baseball starting to come back? So yes. Is what you're finding? Yeah. We did some surveys and a lot of people are planning on coming back again next yeah. year. The, the new committee's done a fantastic job of taking it over and uh, improving pretty much everything that we didn't improve the last few years there, right? So they, they've done a lot of good stuff. Okay. Well, no further questions. Thank you, Daryl, for your presentation, and I'm sure we'll get back to you. Well, I have to come back to the meeting, and uh, no, you'll just send yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, Thank you. Good luck to you in your uh, future there. We heard that you're moving on. So good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you both. Thank you. Thanks. 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 And now we'll. Enter into a closed session at 118 to discuss an item regarding litigation and potential litigation and additional items pertaining to personnel matters about an independent individual, individual, including municipal or local board employees, in accordance with Section 239 of the Municipal Act. Thanks. Um, Councilor Walsh, you are going into closed for this session. For, for just one this just time. one item just this one yeah one of your litigation to so we're just going in to discuss one item one an identifiable item. individual yeah okay. yeah Bitch. <laughs> and I need a motion on that yes you do sir Deputy Mayor Burke uh, Councillor Hodge Greaves all in favor? The motion's carried. Yeah. Rise from closed session now with a report. Uh, I have a mover, Councillor Walsh, seconder. Was that you, Stephanie? Yes, it was. Uh, Stephanie Hodge Greaves. And that's for. Um... The report is for staff to follow direction given in closed, correct? Correct. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? All in favor. That motion's carried. And now we'll move on back. Well, we are in the open session now. We'll uh, move on to staff report and Kyle P. 
talk on the standpipe replacement update, please. Okay, for you, Mayor. Um, so we're just looking to uh, get this uh, to you for information, this report regarding the um, standpipe replacement update, the ICPI, ICIP green funding. Um, I won't go through the whole background again. Um, you guys have seen that a couple times with some RFPs and some other stuff. So um, there's a standpipe being built. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> are you sure so um anyways as of uh i can kind of give you a better update because uh, i found them back uh, i've been up there this morning but um so they actually have two rings built right now and they have the roof pretty much done yeah i can see that yeah yeah so they're uh they're looking at just getting the um the ladder started and then from here that'll be they'll basically be two rings a day about eight feet a day yeah um, and uh, jacking her up and uh, they're going to work straight through from today till november 2nd um that should have a good balance of it up and then they'll be gone for a few days from site and then they'll come back and basically pull the rest of it um straight on through um sundays are just kind of quiet day up there like they won't be doing a lot but right. um they'll be working like 12 hour 11 hour days basically as much as life can uh, can accommodate um obviously they're aware of our bylaw with construction times and that neighbors are close so they're uh, mindful of that. Um, so you can see the, the pictures there, just the kind of base that they uh, constructed for this thing to stand on. It's quite immense when you get up there and uh, you're you're there with it. It's, it's huge. And um, somebody popped by with a drone and gave us a nice bird's eye view. I see that. It's uh, kind of neat to see. So I um, thought I'd throw that picture in there. Um, as far as uh, schedule goes, they're a little behind. They're a little week behind where they thought they'd be when we started the job, but uh, still kind of on track for second to third week of November for that thing to be standing. Um, we're looking to finalize the pipeworks and the tie-in first week of November mm -hmm. um, with uh, Beans and uh, and then commissioning probably the week after that. Um, the commissioning process, you have to do it very slowly to allow any contraction, expansion, yeah within the joints um so that's a longer process obviously it won't be online right away um it'll take probably two weeks to fill it right uh, slowly uh obviously then sampling and all that stuff before it can be switched over fully and uh, we're hoping to be online kind of by the end of the year okay uh question for you kyle i was reading the report and uh, is it common for the consultants to give you an erosion control after the base and that is being built it was something that was requested after the fact. Okay. Um, we didn't really think it was going to be, well, they did have a, like some rough idea, basically. We didn't have a, an erosion control plan right off the hop. Right. Um, but once they started kind of getting the roadway around it built and stuff like that and realized how close we were to the limits, kind of with the property line, et cetera, right. um, and that slope, we thought we better have one before okay. they started doing all those works, like the pipe tie-in and the final grading. Yes. So, um, and as I say, that's probably not going to happen this year right so we need some measures put in place for over winter and spring before mm -hmm. they can get into final topsoil seed finalize that road um trying to get away without any armor stone or like a retention wall there but might there might need to happen. be one yeah might have right. to happen to keep the road around it because they still have to deconstruct the other one right so we need right. to maintain access to the mm -hmm. around the standpipe to the existing one and as you know there's quite a slope up there so oh, yes yeah i'm just gonna roll it down the <laughs> yeah tip it over <laughs> um so anybody else have questions for uh deputy mayor bird uh yeah through you mayor um <clears throat> when it comes time to, to deconstruct the other one what's the timeline on that so that'll probably happen in the spring as well okay. once all that's finalized like i basically told them I'm in no screaming rush to have it down. Yep. I mean, once it's offline and out of service, it's kind of like, you know, and they actually said that it might be something they pick away at in the wintertime if they get favorable weather oh, okay. because it's their slow time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's fine, you know, by right. us. We're not, it's not like it has to be down a week after the other mm -hmm. one's up. Okay. So right. Okay. We're going to pick uh, away at it. Councillor Hodgecruz. Just uh, as well as the decommissioning, do like, is it, it's metal. So do we get any scrap value from it? Well, um, they they are providing a credit okay. right now, 20 grand for it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, if they can get it sold and it can go right from here to that site, um, we're going to negotiate a better price. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yeah. But if, if they've got a decommission and basically take it back to their yard yeah. in Interkip and sit on it, then we're only getting 20 G's. 
uh, Councilor Ward. Yeah, thank you for you, Mayor. Um, I was just wondering, because it's great that um, we have some savings realized for this budget. I was just wondering, altering the ladder design, um, what kind of cost of savings did that? That was about 17 and a half grand. Okay. Yeah, good. yeah, just for the ladder design. Mm -hmm. And all that was, was basically, they had the ladder with rest platforms. Yeah. Um, it's not mandatory, but what it makes it a lot easier for people to go up it. Um, so there's rest platforms all along the way. Yeah. Um, talking with Creatario, um, they said, you know, we do the work on these things all the time and, and we don't need those ladders to go up there. Um, we have the safety equipment in house that already matched the rail system. So we don't need those to go up there. Basically what it does is it keeps people from wanting to put stuff all over the top of your standpipe because not as many contractors want to go up there hauling tools and stuff. So <laughs> anyways. Um, Preventative measure. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. I mean, it's still a perfect, it's like a CSA approved ladder system. It's just yeah. um, not the Cadillac of ladder systems. No, no. That's yeah. right. It's great. Thank you. Yeah. Any further questions? Okay. Councilor Walsh? It would be plans from a social media perspective because some people have no idea that we're having a water tower built, which I'm kind of shocked, but <laughs> will we get some social media out about new water tower gone under construction? Should... Just so people know. We don't want to see people running up there to see it, but maybe when it is that's done. Only, that's my only concern. Yeah, it is a construction mm -hmm. site. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's done just so people are like, I've talked to residents, I can't believe you guys aren't promoting this one because it's like, well, just like we it's talked about it for three yeah. years. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been in the works, but it would be nice when it's all said and done. Um, we can come up with something, something. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll come up with something that makes so it's not curious minds want to go up mm -hmm. there, but um, we can see what we can do. We'll come up with something yeah. to get the word out there because it's also yeah. been in. Newsletters, oh, um, the oh, annual I report. I, I could probably list probably ten things that that's been advertised on. Yeah, I have uh, received a few phone calls on it, like questioning, you know, questions about it. So I mean, it's out there a bit, but maybe I'll get a sauna tube and dress as a standpipe for how <laughs> new water tower coming to go. Norwood. I think the mayor could do that. Yeah, yeah. right. It's your costume idea. Yeah. I was thinking other duty design. Yeah. 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 So we have a recommended uh, recommended uh, motion uh, that the council of the township of Asheville Norwood accepts this report regarding the sand plate replacement update. The ICIP green for information. Councillor four. Councillor Hodge agrees. All in favor? That motion's carried. Awesome. Thanks, Thank you, Kyle. Kyle. Yep, thanks. Take care. Moving along to R2, CAO, Clerk Treasurer. Thank you, Mayor. So on February 28th, Council received a delegation from the Committee who presented concerns in regards to new entrance signs that had been installed at each end of the hamlet. The committee represented representatives presented design options and detailed all of the concerns that they had and provided different approaches for council's consideration. The result of that meeting was a, a motion uh, that authorizes staff to consult with a graphic designer in order to prepare three draft concepts of the community entrance signs located in Norwood and Westwood for council's consideration. Subsequently, staff brought forward an approach um, that was supported by council on May 9th. As per that support, staff implemented the following steps. So the steps are laid out there, one through 10. These near the exact steps that were um, approved on May 9th. Um, item number one of the steps was to consult with a graphic designer and sign manufacturer to present three draft design for council's consideration. So the um, hope today is for council to take a look at those draft designs. I believe there's four, not three, so you got an extra one. Um, the intent was for council to narrow the options. So when we went out to um, public consultation, um, that they had something to give an opinion on or to comment on. 
Um, we took into consideration the comments were that were received, such as um, you know a, a more traditional approach to the signs, not so institutional looking, um, change in change in color, ensuring that the um, the name of the hamlet or the village is larger than the township in which it resides. Um, so um, those have all um, been accomplished. So in front of you today is the draft designs for you to consider. Um, any tweaks, comments, thoughts um, we can take into consideration, provide back to the graphic designer. We'll have them implemented. And it'll be up to council whether you then want to just have that, your changes implemented and then go to public or you want the changes implemented, come back to council before we go out to the public. Um, the goal would be then the public would uh, be able to comment through uh, the general public through public survey, as well as direct consultation with the Westwood Enhancement uh, Committee, the members that uh, met with us at the Westwood Library, circle back around to them um, with the design options in order to gain their feedback. Once all of the public consultation piece has been completed, then the results of that public consultation would come back to council um, for you to decide whether you would like to implement any of uh, those concerns or changes or what they may be. Staff would then take those back to the graphic designer, have that implemented, and then that would be the sign that would be you know, um, manufactured and installed uh, next spring. Um, outside of that, I don't really have anything else to say, Mayor, unless council um, has any questions um, or thoughts, I'll allow you to have your discussion. Discussion? Uh, Councillor War. Uh, thank you for you um, to Candice. I just uh, I, I like the designs. I think they're bright and simple. There's a there's a couple of comments on that, but I'll let everyone else speak on that first. But, um, I was just wondering um, with the steps that you implemented, um, you know, to do the signs. Was there any um, was there any discussion to add like a historical um, portion to the signage, or was that you know? A simpler method was, um, or a simpler design was more pleasing. Was there any thought process about um, having like a historical graphic on on there as well? Um, no. I based on the discussion that we've had in previous councils, um, staff just followed suit with the branding and um, relying on the sign that was installed um, in the Westwood Library um, that has both the um, the previous logo and the new logo and the years. Um, I believe that was the discussion back then. So I just followed suit with that um, as far as just respecting the new branding and not including um, the previous logo on the new signs. But if council would like to see something different, now, now is the time. Uh, Councillor Walsh. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of follow you on with what Candace said. I know we spoke the day we were in the library about, you know, I think there's a wish for maybe the Ewes River, the mill, um, the, the SLA logo from the past being on there. But the feeling was we want to maintain, and we have a new brand, uh, and whether everybody likes it or not, no. we have a new brand that we need to kind of move forward. If we do that in the village of Westwood, yeah. we're also going to see, like, my minor thing is we were also going to look at the, the town of Norwood. So, then you're back into a similar discussion in Norwood again. The other feeling was to that sign that's nearby the library, that that could be made as well more of a historical, um, significant um, signage story built around that, right in the right in the village. But that the signs, to me as well, I was aligned as the signs are the signs, um, not a historical story. So you were sitting on the committee with. I sat in and yeah. the police sat okay. in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I wasn't sure, but I just was thinking about the committee that came forward to council with what they had. You know. That was pretty much the same ones that we met with, was it not? Yeah, yeah. and you know, so that was my question from that because I just remember that that was kind of their questioning on that. I was just wondering how we we got to this, but no, it's clearly laid out, and um, I think there is another opportunity to do a historical context um, uh, at another site. Uh, Deputy Member. Uh, thank you through you. Um, I have one favorite. I won't give it away because I'm not sure what everybody else is thinking, but I do like them. I like the ones that says Hamlet of Westwood Large when it was established in the Nashville North community on the bottom. 
um, to me that says everything you need to say about a sign um, when you're in a meeting. I, I do like the idea of, you know, moving forward. Um, having a, an area could be at the Western Park, another one could be in Norwood or at the Lions Park that says a little bit of history. And history. you see them in a lot of communities, you know, it might be a little kiosk and it has, you know, pictures and history. When you see a sign and you're driving through, you don't need that, but it's nice if you have, you know, a park or a stopping area and it gives a little bit of history of the area. And I love that idea. I'd like to see that, you know, as we move forward, oh, yeah. certainly it's not in the budget for this year, but, um, and I think, the historical society could add to their list of things. So just, yeah, yeah, I mean, we have already uh, done some investigating mm -hmm. on um, other communities that have put in the kiosk kind yeah. of style. Yeah. You know, it has a, a QR code. It has, yeah. you know, a little bit of history about it. We, we have been doing some investigation with mm -hmm. the Cultural Heritage Committee as well to, you know, have another layer of history yeah. for, you yeah. know, for a community. Exactly. And I, and I think it's a nice, it's a nice, bridge because the Heritage Center isn't open all the time. The library isn't open all the time to get historical right. books. But when people come through the community, they stop in the park, you know, they have a rest stop. Um, I was in Quebec in September. Every little community had that. So yeah. I did take a few pictures. They all, well, not every, but a lot of the small ones did. And I think it, I think it adds a nice touch. Um, but anyway, we're looking at these signs. I, I like them. I do have one favorite, but I think they can all go out um, to the public and uh, to get some extra input. Extra and input. That's, um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Councillor yeah. hodge -Grease. Similar comments, just that, yeah, the when the delegation came, there was a, more of a graphic imagery in it, but talking around that. I, as signs, as Laurie says, as you're driving past them, they're good. And like Laurie also has a secret favorite, I suppose, but, um, and I agree that having it as Aspen on Norwood community don't really have I and I think as long as we take them with open mind to um, public consultation and see what comes out of that, I think that's that's what we can I think that's the best way forward. All right. Councilor, so if I can just circle back, I just I really had jotted down three things. Um, one is I think it is a balanced approach. We we have to listen to the group. Um, we're we're not always going to agree on everything that's said, but I, I think we tried to take a balanced approach. Certainly, West would be more prominent. From my mind, was number one thing heard loud and clear from the group. Um, as far as the imagery and all that, I, I think there's an, another way we can do that. Is, is as Deputy Mayor Burger said, um, I, I have a, uh, one that I enjoy too. I think the only one I that probably don't, but I'll share is, is the last one that says the Hamlet of Westwood, as well as 1861. Personally, I still think we need a reference that it's your part of us going in there. Kind of You're right. Yeah, uh, the other three, I'm pretty much wide open. Any further questions? Okay, we have a recommended motion that the Council of the Towns of Basketball, Norwood accepts this report in regards to community entrance signs for information and further that the Council of the Township of Basketball, Norwood authorize the staff to release a draft entrance sign to sign for public consultation. I'll make a motion when they put it Okay, moved by Deputy Mayor Burt, seconder, uh, Councillor Warren. Sorry. I, in terms of, we don't have how it goes out to the public. And where is that? Present, incorporate any comment, represent the designs. Result. So, how are we public consulting? That's the part I don't. Um, so the public consultation will be through um, to vote on the signs. So the signs will be released. The public will be able to vote on which ones they like the best. Um, so we vote by survey um, via vote, and then the um, but there'll be direct. Um, we'll book a meeting with the Westwood Enhancement. Yeah. Like there'll be direct because voting is, uh, in my opinion, voting on signs is not consultation. That's the design that's a final decision process consultation to me means yes we need to speak with people in a one-on-one -on -one scenario 
So that's, voting would mean they would choose the sign. They so they're not choosing the sign. So traditionally when we put out, okay, so you look at the signs, this one's my favorite. There'll be a comment box. I chose this one because I enjoy the shape. I enjoy the yeah. wording. I enjoy the coloring. Yeah. Um, if we don't, if we don't have that section in and all we just do is a comment box, yeah. Um, then all we have is a string of comments and I have no data matrix. So if they choose one and say, okay, yeah. rank them, order one right. to four, have a comment box as to why they yeah. rank them that way, then we can get their, we can say 40% of the people who voted, which is this many people, yeah. enjoy this sign the most. Okay. And this is the general, I, um, as to why they enjoyed it. Okay. So it's so it's, it's not a vote, just a vote. You, it's not just a click. You like this one best. It's a vote in a comment box and a comment box. And then okay. we bring those back to be able to say this number of percentage of the voting. Uh, those who chose to vote like sign sign one because of ABCD. These ones this percentage like sign three because of ABCD. Yeah. And then you'll get the Westwood Enhancement Committee comments. Okay. And then it comes back to council for what you want to do with that feedback. Okay. And then is there an element of putting as presenting them as a hard copy on display in the libraries for people to view them? And with the made up with Norwood in there and as well as Westwood? Um, I'm gonna I would vote no, but I'll leave that up to council. Okay. Well, I the last part so just my my I'm just I'm questioning the consultation. Yeah. And my comment is, will the signs as hard copies be available for people to view, say on display in the libraries and with a mock-up of Norwood instead of Westwood, so that you so that people in Norwood know that it's not just Westwood signs okay. being made, that they're Norwood signs. That part, yes. So okay. I didn't pay the graphic designer to no, go back and do them both at this stage in yeah. case we completely upended it, you know? Yeah. So we'll have the ones that go out to the public, we'll have yeah. the Westwood versions and we'll have the Norwood versions. So it's okay. very clear to both. Yeah. Um, as far as having hard copies available, hard copies would always be available for anything in, in the municipal office. We could make hard copies available. Just I'm struggling with putting up like physical displays in okay. municipal um facilities just based on the sensitivity of the topic okay okay yeah i just that was my comment like i don't think there's any issue in having a piece of paper with the pictures of the signs no. around that's normally what we do but yeah not physical samples so yeah okay, okay so we have yeah. a motion on the table and recorded vote okay Just give me one sec. Sorry, another thing. It says three draft concepts, but it is going to be the four. Be yeah, I, I think that's. That would be the four. Okay. Yeah, it would be the four. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burt. Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor War. Yes. Mayor Wilford. Yes. Councillor Hodgkins. Yes. Motion is carried. Okay, moving along. Um, R3, Candace is going to public meeting. Oh, sorry. At this time, we'll now be going into public meetings. So, do I need a motion to suspend the meeting room right now? Councillor or Deputy Mayor Burton and Councillor Wall, all in favor? That motion is carried. I'd welcome everybody here to our public meeting. Everybody here is staff and counselors. Uh, any declarations of pecuniary interest on this matter, you can declare it now or at the time. And Seeing no hands, I'm looking for a motion, a motion of approve the public meeting agenda as circulated. Councillor Ward, Councillor Walsh, any discussion? All in favor? Motion is carried. And I'll now turn the floor over to our chief building official, Ed Whitmore. Thank you, through you, Mayor. This zoning bylaw amendment application 
ZBLA-02-2023 is applicable to the lands described as 2233 Asphodel Third Line. Municipal roll number 1501-010-002-050-00. It's been session three and it's part lot 16 in the township of Asphodel, Norwood. The purpose and effect of the zoning bylaw amendment is to rezone a portion of the subject lands from the rural residential zone to the rural zone. There's no change to the existing EP, Environmental Protection Zone, on the severed or on the retained lands. The rezoning is required as a condition of consent for Peterborough County Land Division file number B-53-22. The effect of is to create a lot addition to an existing rural property. So this is backwards compared to most lot additions. Most lot additions, you have a small lot and a large parcel of land, and a piece of land goes from the large parcel to the little parcel. That's the typical lot addition. This lot addition is backwards. It's a large rural residential lot, like a residential lot, and a little piece of that, two acres or so, is going to a large piece of land that's zoned rural to a large piece of farmland. And it's the first one that I've more or less seen ever. So normally it's always the other way around, a big piece of land giving a small piece to the little acre size land. Uh, the Council of uh, Township of Aspel Norwood, we've recommended the approval of the consent application May 24th, 2022. And the County of Peterborough Land Division approved the consent October 13th of 2022, subject to rezoning of the severed lands to the satisfaction of the township. And there were a few other uh, conditions as well. So the attachments for this zoning bylaw amendment application is the application itself, and then the notice of complete application and the notice of the public meeting. It's a combined notice. Uh, the engagement with the public, the notice of complete application and notice of public meeting has been circulated in accordance with the Planning Act to all the required agencies and to the neighboring area properties within 120 meters of the site. The combined notice of complete application and notice of public meeting has been posted on Asphodel Norwood's website and posted on the subject property itself on the third line. We received some comments from Enbridge Gas. They have no concern. Orca, no objections. And the County Peter Republic Works, no objections. No other phone calls or written comments have been received from any of the circulated residences or from any other agencies still to the state other than the three that I just mentioned. For the conclusion, the zoning amendment, if it's passed today, is subject to a 20-day appeal period. And if no appeals are received by 4.30, November 13th, 2023, the zoning bylaw amendment will be final and binding. And the next steps, if this is passed, would be to bring forward a merger agreement to be entered into and registered on title to merge the severed parcel with the abutting land and it's identified as municipal roll number 15010100020510510. And those two parcels would be considered as one. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Deputy Mayor Burke. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much, Ed, for the presentation. Um, I'm just looking back at the dates, and I, and I do remember the, when this was done because it was a little bit different. Um, so going back, and I'm just looking at the dates, 2020, May 24, 2022, and then October 13, 2022. Is that kind of a normal timeline for this type of um, I, I don't know. change? You, you know what I mean? Through you, Mayor. I don't know yeah. why some timelines are really fast yeah. and some timelines are two years down the road. Okay, it just seemed like a long time since we've seen this file, so I was just wondering. So sometimes it's like we've been ghosted and mm -hmm. we hear nothing and we'll ask, 
and nothing and we'll ask and then still nothing and usually uh it brings it to the top of the pile when we do ask okay and then we'll see it yeah that's all any, questions? any other questions thank you Ed. um this Sure. Um, if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Township of Aspinall Norwood before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Township of Aspinall Norwood to the Ontario Land Tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Township of Aspinall Norwood before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. Great, we have a recommended motion that the Council of Township of Baskell Norwood accepts this report regarding the ZBLA-02-2023 Edgerton for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood direct staff to prepare a bylaw that will rezone a portion of the subject lands from rural RU zone to rural RU zone. Can I have a move by Councillor Walsh? Second by Deputy Mayor Bird. Any further questions? All in favor of that motion? Motion's carried. And I guess ask for adjournment of the public meeting. Mm -hmm. And the time is 2.11. And to resume our regular council meeting. Need a motion for that? Councilor Ward. Deputy Mayor Bird. All in favor? That motion's carried. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, Ed. Take care, guys. So we go back to R3. Uh, yes. Uh, draft police and conservation authority budget. Go ahead, Candace. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So in your council agenda package, you have the draft 2024 police conservation authority budget. The 2024 policing budget includes a 1% increase to the OPP contract as per the billing statement received. It has been included as an appendix to the staff report, so you can see exactly what it is we're going to pay, what the um, billing amount is. The Conservation Authority includes a 3% increase to the 2023 levy. Um, we haven't received the final ORCA budget as of yet, but we will see it in its final form prior to Council adopting the municipal uh, budget for Aspidale Norwood. That's a placeholder. I think we're going to be in that 2.5 to 3% range. Um, so at least you have a general idea of what's coming when you see the final budget on November 14th. Uh, the source water protection fee is as per the executed, executed agreement between the township and ORCA for source water management. And overall, it's a proposed tax allocation increase of approximately um, just over $8,000. And you'll see that we did continue to include the $10,000 for the police services board uh, for the joint PSB. Um, again, just to flag that for all of you that when that board actually gets created and um, all of the bylaws, the governing documents for that board and the direction and how it's gonna go, whether they're gonna have a staff person, where that staff person is coming from, you know, obviously they're gonna need a computer and all of those sorts of things. And it's gonna look much, much different. The problem is, is none of us are gonna have those answers before anybody adopts their budget. So everyone's putting a placeholder in there that may or may not cover it, but at least you'll have a good idea um, after 2024, what what do you have to put in for 2025? It would be, sorry, it would be a shared cost among everybody. Yes, correct. <clears throat> correct. Um, that's it. Unless council has okay, any questions well, thank for you. anything here for that report. Um, yeah. Recommendation that the council of township Aspen down Norwood accepts this report regarding the 2024 draft public or police and Conservation Authority budgets for information. Moved by Councillor Walsh. Comment. Comment. Uh, second by Councillor Ward. Uh, Councillor Walsh. Yeah, and, just, and, and thank you for the annual billing statement. And so it's, it is interesting when they go ahead and so if I read it correctly on, on a base service cost, 
it's about so it's fifteen hundred sixty five dollars a household or about fourteen dollars a month. Mm -hmm. It's just that's a nice number that I never knew. I can't do what our overall bill is, but it is nice to know even we share with people that you know like here it can cost base prices. You know? Well, and then as you know, as we grow, so every house that's put in the ground costs one hundred and sixty five dollars. Now they're always a bit behind. Okay. Right, because they go lot, they do use impact data. So, you know, we'll see houses in the ground before we're seeing it being charged for, for a policing perspective. But that just gives you kind of an idea. We get credit. So, for instance, um, in the spreadsheet, you will see um, OPP credit previous year. So, that's when there's been things that they build. So, what you're seeing there is actually from 20, what we received in this statement is for 2022. And just like any sort of, you know, billing anomalies, they kind of catch it there, as well as uh, recovered OPP fines. So now we receive those quarterly, and I have seen an increase in what we are seeing there um, by about 25 to 30 so. percent. Any other questions? All in favor of that motion? Motion's carried out, sir. Moving along to R4, got part of the budget, Candace. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So in front of Council is the 2024 draft parks budget. Um, again, it's looking for an overall impact to the levy of approximately $12,000. The capital portion of the parks budget will include in Aspidal Heights of the addition of a spring toy. Um, the replacement, so we've replaced one there. So they have three wooden tables out there. One got replaced this year to um, a composite table. And so this will be, we're trying every year to, um, through Trisha, and get rid of those wooden picnic tables. Um, Aspidel Park, um, the, an accessible swing set. So it'll have the accessible um, seat. Um, wood chips, 10 trees um, for tree replacement program. And as well as we got to add some gravel to the, the driveway out there. Uh, the community center park, you'll see an accessible swing. This isn't a separate swing set. One of the adult swings is going to be, the swing itself is going to be removed and an accessible swing um, put there in its place. A three seat shade table. Um, we have, that's one thing we did here through the budget survey was definitely more shaded seating, not that's in the uh, shelter, but closer to the amenities where the children are playing, whether that's by the all wheels park, splash pad. Um, so try to find an area there where the parents are sitting in a shaded area and, and a little bit closer to the children's activities. Um, and then some wood chips. Uh, Norwood Park is going to see a tree. The shelter was built there this year, um, as well as, uh, of course, council knew this was coming the uh, picnic shelter at the uh, Westwood Park, as well as in a tree. And then as per previous discussion with council um, that got started back when we received the correspondence from Peterborough County in regards to the uh, Pride Crosswalk, Township staff met with the Norwood Pride representatives. And uh, through that, they are in support of Pride benches or Pride uh, picnic tables uh, being installed in the township in lieu of a crosswalk. So we'll, staff will be recommending a um, bench or a picnic table, um, one this year, one next year, one the year after. With final location has not been determined. It's not included in the staff report, but final location will be determined in consultation with the Pride Committee. Um, the operational budget realizes additional summer student hours um, and an anticipated 15% increase in insurance costs. And the increase in hours, as we've added the fitness center here um, and the All Wheels Park, we need to have someone dedicated at the community center um, throughout the summer months. Um, a lot of times the staff are out grass cutting, weed eating, watering flowers, and they're getting called back here way too many times in interruptions. <laughs> um, so it's just adding a few more summer student hours to be able to cover that gap. So there's three summer students that's been budgeted. We'll apply for the grant, obviously through the Canada Summer Jobs Program. And that's included in the budget, as well as the Westwood Shelter will be funded from development charges as it is a new amenity. And there is uh, money in the recreation, cultural and parks um, allocation of the seats to fund it. Um, and all of that combined it lands us with a $12,000 increase to the overall department budget. I'll leave it with council if they have any specific questions. 
I'll get a motion to uh, pass this and then we'll do discussion. Uh, the Council of the Township of Bassadale Norwood accepts this report regarding the 2024 draft budget for parks for information. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Burke for the comment. Seconded by uh, Councillor Ward. Go ahead, uh, Lord. Uh, thank you through you, Mayor. Um, yeah, I just wanted to pass along. I, I was speaking with um, a family over the weekend um, from Kitchener Waterloo, and they have been here a few times through the summer, and they say that this park, the community center, doesn't touch any of the thing have. They they love it here with everything that's there. And, and so I just want to pass that along. And then just a comment about the pride bench. I'm so thankful you're getting bench, picnic table, whatever the case may be. I I um looking at the <clears throat> the crosswalk in Hastings and I, I noticed in the spring because that discussion was coming up, um it wasn't painted. It looked horrible in May. Driving past there again this morning, it's dull, it's, you know, it, it's dirty, it doesn't look good. So I'm so pleased that we're going with a bench or a picnic table. I, I think it makes so much more sense that people can use it. Right. And um, so thankful that uh, the committee came up with that decision because, uh, yeah, well, it's great. Yeah. And um, I don't really have any questions on the budget. That was just a couple of comments I had. So thank you. Uh, um, thank you, Dean Mayor. Um, I, I just had a comment as well. I don't have anything really about the budget because I think it's nice to see yeah. things coming to the different parks. And I'm really uh, thankful for the three seat shade table because that was one of the comments at Canada Day um, was that their kids were playing at the uh, the splash pad and there wasn't a place for them to sit on a bench with some kind of shade over top of them. And I think that's just gonna make that area even more well used yeah. because you wanna take a you know, look at after your kids while you're there. So mm -hmm. I think well done for including that. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motion's mm -hmm. carried. Uh, Candace, management action. Hey, Council, to see kind of how we're getting through, a um, couple of things to highlight for you. Um, so next Tuesday, we're going to have another Council meeting. And as you know, I'm going to try to sew things up um, before my departure. So we have the SEMO Producer Responsibility Agreement. So we have um, met with SEMO um, Circular Materials Ontario in regards to what that's going to look like. We know how much they're going to reimburse the township from the um, from the producers through SEMO um, for having the recycling um, um, depot up there. So the large recycling bins, those those large recycle um, bins, for lack of a better term, are owned by Peterborough County. We have yet to learn exactly what's going to happen with those uh, with those bins, whether it, the municipality is going to be um, getting uh, cost benefit towards having them um, provided to the residents. Is the county going to want us to purchase them? Are they going to leave them there? So that is one piece of the puzzle that hasn't been um, fully decided. Um, it's sitting around approximately 22, 23,000 a year to have the recycle bins there. So um, definitely um, I think the township will be made whole in regards to any expenses that are incurred for the recycling program at the transfer station, which is great. Um, to give council a heads up, the agreement isn't traditionally what we see in regards to an agreement because they had to enter into the, these agreements with hundreds of municipalities at the same time. So they're not all they're not as geared to each municipality as much as we're traditionally used to seeing. So there are sections in the agreement that don't pertain to us because we don't even offer that service. Um, we had it reviewed as a collective group, as the county. We got together and one um, solicitor that specializes in environmental um, has reviewed the agreement multiple times. We've went back to CMO multiple times and we're getting to the wire here where the agreement is what it is. They're not willing to make any more changes to it. And again, the transition only lasts two years. So this agreement really will only be in effect until 2026, at which time the final transition period will have ended and a new agreement that will address all of the final changes will need to be entered into. Um, so that agreement is going to come forward. Um, education has, that conversation has been kickstarted. We haven't seen anything 
um, from the province in regards to educating the residents. We don't even have what the final message is going to be. Um, that said, as a township, we have decided that we are going to start putting up to the residents to start paying attention and looking for communications from the township, from the province, from the county, in and around. I suspect they're not going to get to it till late November but wanting um, the residents to start looking now. So if we start repeating the message a few times every week between now and January 1st, hopefully the residents will um, be able to notice, oh, there's changes. We just don't know exactly what those changes are going to be at the curb and what it means logistically for a resident at this point in time. But at least we're putting the buzz in the ear that January 1st changes are coming um, and to please continue to look back and to educate yourself as to what those changes are. Once known, um, it would it would be my hope that a mailer would go out with those changes. I would hope that the province would provide the funds to be able to do that and provide um, the actual communicative itself. I would not rely on that, um, you know, as far as just getting something in the physical hands of the residents of what those changes are that they can put on the fridge, they can put beside the phone, that they can kind of reference what it means. Because there's going to be changes to what's allowed in the box and what box and that sort of thing. So those are significant changes. We have no idea if there's gonna be a grace period. We don't know what that grace period is gonna look like. So all of these things need to start um, be, to be communicated. So, yeah. What about commercial businesses? So the ICI, um, they've all already been all contacted um, by the county. That's all went out. Those communi That communication has all went out and they're dealing with it direct. So the final solution from the county as to what's happening with the ICI, um, I suspect if I was a guessing person, and maybe the mayor, the deputy mayor would be able to fill us in a little bit on this, is that they will they'll take it on and provide a contract to be able to pick up the ICI. Whether they loop into the Antara contract to be able to um, have them pick it up and then Antara would charge the county for the ICI, charge the province for the residential. But again, that. That piece hasn't been fully sewn up either, um, but hopefully, obviously, before January 1st, it's yeah. going to get sewn up. It, it just feels, sorry, three mayor, it just feels like we're getting down to the wire. And it would be really nice to have the plans in place and everybody know, especially the institutions and commercial. It's going to be a big change. Yeah. Um, well, it, hopefully, well, if the county moves into an agreement and keeps it in the levy and keeps yeah. it in the county levy and just continues with Antara, yeah. then I don't see there being much change other than the change that everyone's going to see. Okay. Yeah. But again, we need that but final no. piece. Yeah, so, but there's so county councillors. As, <laughs> as I said in another meeting, they, they sometimes in there, it's like a stance. Yeah. We have five uh, municipalities. Oh, Pardon me? That's coming in my report. We have five, okay. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue on. Um, um, Councilor Moore. Yeah, thank you for you. Just a question for Candace looking at the you know things that are upcoming. Um, I was just I was just wondering, uh, has there been any uh, communication back about the Westwood Cemetery and where that's going to fall in or will that be added to the action list? I was just wondering the timeline for that um, coming forward and you know that we don't lose track of it mm -hmm. as counselors as well. Mm -hmm. Um I will move back on that one okay, at sure. the end, sure, if you don't yes. mind. No problem. Yeah. Um, and I'll explain kind of how those items are going to be addressed okay. um, with with staff. I have an entire list actually okay. um, to advise council of. Um, so, bridge and dam plan to be um, it is it is finished. Um, the plans are going to start to take a a, a different form. Um, it's very challenging. It's nice to give council an idea of what the costs are going to be, but I think these plans need to transition into an order of priority and not necessarily assign a financial cost to them. So if you don't, when you approve them, you don't adopt them and assign a financial resource to that plan guaranteed. You essentially, you know, receive a plan, approve a plan, you approve basically the priority of the plan as it's identified, whether it be asset management plan, condition base, age base, whatever it may be. And then come budget time, we take another look at it or we tender them 
And when the plan was created three years prior, because they're five-year plans, you know, there is no longer, that costing is no longer relevant. Um, specifically when we're in a, a challenging, I, I say the municipality as a whole, and this is not unique to, uh, to us, we're in our awkward growing stage, you know, we're 12, and we're awkward and our legs have grown before the rest of our body. So we're in kind of that awkward growing phase where we've got this much growth that has come online. Now we have to catch some infrastructure up to A, continue to support the existing base plus the growth, but then prepare for the growth that's coming. But you don't have the tax base from the growth that's coming. So you're in this awkward phase on top of the inflation. So, you know, balancing all of that, it, it's really these plans are boiling down to, um, and you'll see it when you see the transportation plan, is gonna look different than us just in five years ago, six years ago, we would just pull the plans off the shelf. This is what the asphalt plan says. This is what the surface treatment plan says. This is what the sidewalk plan says. And plop, 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 plop. We know the tenders are gonna be approved, tax rate is X, and away we go. We don't live in that world anymore. So the bridge and dam plan is going to come forward, and if you have concerns with that, um, please you know voice them and let me know. As in order of priority to advise you the assets that require work and the scope of work that's required on the asset, but no financial dollar figure to it, other than potentially a range. And if it's a large budget item, then you'll know you may have to be putting into reserves for it because they're really, none of it's relevant anymore. And a lot of work goes into quoting all of that, costing all of it for it to just be relevant 12 months down the road. Just to comment on that, I think we've seen that in the last, especially the last 18 months where we have sent tenders out and they come back and we can't touch them. We can't Both touch. at the county, certainly a lot at the county, county. not so many here, but it, it is, it's a lot of time and it's a waste of time to do that mm -hmm. when you have to go back and, and relook. So I think that's I think that's smart and realizing as a group around this table that you know the financial costs will be seen at right. the time. I think I think that's a good use of resources, staff resources. It makes yeah, sense. It's a lot of time pulling yeah. all of it out, reaching out, and plus the contract, the people on the other end. Yeah have to respond yeah. right so we're taking their time to respond for something that we're not doing for four years mm -hmm. you know so they're trying to build cost inflation in etc so yeah. yeah. it's just Councillor war yeah just as a, a, a comment even uh the sidewalks that were recently done we had to scale back because the tenders came in you know we mm -hmm. could only do a portion of what we wanted to and that's an example even mm -hmm. with our small township of not being able to cost it out mm -hmm. and having to take some on in-house but yeah you know we haven't had to do exactly mm -hmm. okay um you're hopefully gonna between october 31st and november 7th you're gonna see the norwood water or wastewater rates um kyle and i met this morning and find, spent a couple hours kind of finalizing where we're headed we just got two outstanding pieces that we need costing on we're waiting on getting the response back so Fingers crossed that, that those emails are received and we know what costs to build in. Um, we're just going to bump back. No. To adopt 2024 office uh, closure dates, council meeting schedules. So put some thought into that if we need to do a procedural bylaw change. Because if you're going to do a procedural bylaw change as far as, you know, you're going to forego Zoom meetings, um, then I need to know. I would like to know that um, because then, I mean, we can adopt the schedule and then bring the zoning or the procedural bylaw amendment to the following meeting. That's fine. Um, but give some thought into the value of Zoom meetings, whether you want to continue with those, whether you want to continue with the one meeting a month for July, August, October, December. And you know, February, we went back and forth with multiple times. Like sometimes we have two meetings in February, but it all depends on where good roads fall and how many counselors attend and whether we'll have quorum, right? Mm -hmm. So just start to put some thought into that and please uh, reach out to me to have some discussions. We only have so many meetings before I depart so to ensure that we can sew that these conversations up. Um, draft water and sanitary uh, connection fees, Watson and Associates. So Peter will be back. 
uh, next Tuesday to deliver that. The following meeting, um, uh, Baker Tilly is coming to present the financial statements. We have some concerns and um, the cemetery board financial statements for 2022 are still not complete. Um, the assumption for Norwood Park phase one, I think it's actually gonna come October 31st. Uh, we are ready to assume that subdivision. There's an interesting, so phase one, so I'm not going to be here. So your first assumption of your first subdivision is gonna happen yeah. and it's phase one. Phase one is gonna look very different than any other assumption by law that you would dot for phase two, three, four, Mill Street, et cetera, because it was an existing R plan that was purchased, and then they put another R plan on top of it. So we're gonna have to dedicate streets in the bylaw where it's just, it's a different process to end at the same result. So I just don't want you to panic because it looks so much different. But when you get to phase two, it's going to be much cleaner, not as wordy as a bylaw because all of them were, were dedicated to the township through our plan. That didn't happen in phase one. It was an old, old our plan back through the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing that was approved in <laughs> 70, 60, 70. And another R plan was put on top of it, obviously, because how they would build 40, 50 years ago is not how they have to build today. There's no such thing as stormwater management plans back then, et cetera, et cetera. So the configuration of those lots had to be completely redone, which, of course, came back to was in council chambers and approved back in 2016-ish. Um, so just know that's coming forward. But when you see phase two and three, it's going to look, the bylaw will look different. Um, third quarter department re reports you're going to see. Um, in November 7th, the medical center lease, uh, the final lease for that, you're going to see, um, I need some direction in regards to the council remuneration bylaw. So as the returning member of members of council are aware, that bylaw was adopted up until December 31st of 2023 with no remuneration adopted for January 1st of 2024. So a decision needs to be made as far as would you like to see um, the staff report come back picking up that study that was completed and implementing next steps? Or um, are we um, putting on a, a, like a C CPI or would you like me to present a staff report with both options? That's what I was okay. going to say. You can just put both options yes. in there. Sure. I think that would be the best. So, okay. And, um, you know, new members of council can take a look at it. And I, I think, yeah, I think that's the best way of moving forward. Okay. Um, zoning bylaw amendments for Gerben, the two properties that were um, severed, as well as Hale. Um, we're hoping that we were going to see those back from the county to be able to see them. Um, but I haven't got word. Uh, Kyle still doesn't have, he's had the compliance inspection months ago, but hasn't received the final document to send into council. Still waiting for it uh, from the ministry. So that may come. You will notice that the November 28th meeting of council isn't there. So that is something that perhaps we could chat about in general business as to um, whether that council meeting um, is required. Because when you look at the action list, the December 13th, um, I have the municipal insurance renewal down on the 13th of December. I'm thinking it'll probably come November 14th. Um, and really then you would only be holding, uh, the council meeting in December would be for two reasons to adopt the development charge bylaw because it went out, it's going to public meeting on November 14th and then it has to be adopted on December 12th. So you have to do just a bylaw adoption. All of the public meeting will have been addressed, the staff reports, all your information, it is simply the bylaw at the end of the meeting, as well as um, that would be really all you would need to do in the regular public regular meeting of council. And then a pretty heavy public meeting when you look at the zoning bylaw amendments that the county's trying to get um, in our hands. So, you know, you see seven properties there. 
um, in regards to zoning bylaw, but you, you've sat through enough of them. You see how quickly they can go. You've seen all of these before. None of these are new. These are second steps. Um, so that's what December 13th would look like. If you flip the page moving forward, you'll see that everything else has been bumped to 2024 um, with no name assigned to it. Some of the stuff will come off based on budget, such as pedestrian connectivity plan. When the budget 2024 budget is approved, that will come off because it was included in the budget. Um, the other thing, additional radar signs, you see, you're going to see um, a couple of those in the 2024 budget as well. Um, the community improvement plan is going to move forward. Um, some of the ongoing stuff is just going to be um, ongoing. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's just not enough time to get them completely cleaned up before I leave. It's like, hold my master list here. <laughs> as far as there is some things that um, management team meeting tomorrow that we're going to be addressing. So the next action list, there's going to be additional items with someone's name beside them that will be for the beginning of the year. Um, this would include on my list is the Westwood Cemetery. Um, the Westwood Cemetery um, hasn't fallen off. We're waiting for that art plan to be registered by the surveyor. Once it's actually registered, the lawyer can pick up and move on to next steps. That may happen um, before I leave and it may not. Um, the other one was we chatted about RFP for uh, fitness center instructors um, as far as um, putting in um, someone do really seeing an RP for a contractor. So that's something we're going to chat about at management team tomorrow. We've chatted about that before. Um, uh, recruitment for the medical center staff um, has been released. It's out collecting applications now. Um, I will have them hired and onboarded before I go. Okay. Um, any questions on the action list? Oh, actually, I do. I have three in there. Yes. Um, the additional electric EV charging stations. Um, as we know, we have two here, and I did have that in my questions um, under general business with the new funding that is coming. Will we be, as a township, looking at that? Is staff interested in the management team agenda? It's on the management team agenda tomorrow. We'll okay. see which staff person okay. can take it on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw the funding. Um, and it's more location um, okay. because you need to have certain. I'm, not, I'm going to butcher this terminology, but basically like a big enough transformer or big enough large yeah. enough hydro at the pole yeah. to be able to support them, to support them. So when we looked at it originally or when um, the PUC put those in at the at Foodland, we looked at multiple locations, including here, and it really boiled down to ease of connection at the pole. And that was one question um, that Peter and I kind of bounced off of each other as in, you know, we haven't really detailed looked at the funding stream to see if there's an ability to have to expense an upgrade to that oh, to change okay. location or whether you have to basically be plug and play ready at the pole. Right. right. So there is some stay tuned. Okay. No, thank you. And You're I guess on that note, I know when PUC owned it, you would get a report. Yeah, uh, and, and we sent we sent did. multiple emails. Yeah. It would be really interesting to see. How well it's used because at the time it was extremely well used. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it really I can nice send you all the emails I've sent that went unanswered. Uh, even yeah. ask, can you send me to the correct person? Yeah, you know, yeah, please, yeah. like anything. And no. I maybe Hydro doesn't even have doesn't maybe, even have yeah. that figured out yet. Um, yeah, I know. but okay, um, sir, war. Thank um, yes, thank you for you. I, I just have one more question about upcoming things, and I was wondering. The final kind of piece of the puzzle with doing the standpipe, the aquifer capacity report. Have we just been waiting for DM Wills to come back to present that to us, or no. how how is that happening, and how does that work? You need the you need the other well. Okay. So in, in the 2024 budget, there'll be the uh, I guess the well five will be drilled, okay. and then they have to do the pump test on well five. So if we went ahead, so we know that we have. You've received part one of the of the aquifer capacity report, and it has stated that you can support the 1,965 cubic meters a day. 
So then the second part of that was, okay, what can we do above the 1,965 cubes a day? Well, then we get the new towers. The hydrogeologist said, if we go and do additional pump tests on our existing wells with the current diameter and the size of the pumps there, you're going to get X result. Then we're going to go, the fall, and we're going to, the following year, drill a new 10-inch large well with a bigger pump, and then all of a sudden, that report is redundant. Because once you pump and do a pump test on a larger well with a larger pump with a higher yield, it's going to obviously change the outcome. So we decided to not pay to continue to have that report finalized until the fifth well was drilled, the 10 inch well with the bigger pump in the ground, because we have to do the pump test on that for the ministry to allow us to put it online. So it's kind of like, why do the pump test on this? And then we have to do the pump test on the new well for the ministry to increase the permit to take water. And it's more trying to be efficient with the field work and the dollars on the engineering consulting side. Um, so really you won't know the answer. We know there's gonna be substantially more, but what that peak point is, and you really don't technically, we're sitting at about a third capacity, right? So we're sitting at about a third. So we felt we had the time to actually be efficient with those dollars and the time versus, you know, if we were sitting at 90% of the wells being used at the 1965, well, we better get at this and see what we got left. But it just wasn't. No, thanks for the clarification. I know yeah. I've asked that question before, mm -hmm. but I just thought it was, you know, with everything coming up, it's a good rewind, reminder to everyone why it's still on there. But yeah. Um, what the next? I uh, suspect uh, next <laughs> next fall. Yeah. I, I suspect it'll probably sit there for another year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any further questions? Can I have a motion to accept this report? Uh, Councillor Hodge Greaves and Councillor Walsh. All in favor? Motion's carried. Um, for, uh, and Anthony C. Green C4, they pulled it, remember? All right, yes. That's right. If it's C1. Three, 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 three. Yeah. Uh, we'd like to discuss three and four now. Um, I think it was Councillor Ward at pulled C3. Mm -hmm. uh, go ahead. Uh, well, I just I wanted to have anybody else else's opinion or thoughts um, from Council about what we feel. Uh, because I do think that small municipalities, especially in the planning department, are limited. So I think that this could be relevant to our township at some point. So that's my thought. So I would motion to support. I'm happy to hear any conversation. Thoughts? Okay, so that's moved by Councillor War, seconder by Councillor Wall. Any more discussion on that? Everybody's ready, everybody's in favor. All in favor? Yeah, most is carried. Uh, C4. Uh, yeah, again, from the from the AMO um, site or the AMO letter on the social and economic prosperity review, I do think that's something that we absolutely need to support, whether it uh, goes anywhere or not, yeah. but it's it's an important one, so I, I make a motion for support. Deputy Mayor uh, Burt is moved and seconded by Councillor War. All in favor of that motion? That motion is carried also. Moving along to C7 now. Fixing mm -hmm. Long-Term uh, care, long care Amendment Act till death do us part. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird, motion to support. Motion to support. Seconder, uh, Councillor Hodge Grease. <clears throat> Shouldn't be much discussion if you read that. All in favor? The motion's carried. Uh, CA right, to receive to receive uh, moved by Councillor War. Second, second by Deputy Mayor Bird. Uh, yeah, just, just a comment. Um, I 
personally support it, but I think as a as a council, we need to let councils do their own thing, and um, that's why I am saying to receive this time. Right. Any further comments? All in favor? Is that a yes to the hands? Okay. Nation uh, request. Um, the Beehive Outdoor Rink. Uh, we had a donation request earlier. Can I ask a question? You certainly can. Okay. Um, total fund request is five hundred dollars, and we have left in that fund approximately thousand. Thousand. Okay. And then, um, how much staff time is put into that? Approximately. Any I have no idea. Idea. No. Okay. I. Okay. But there is staff time involved as well, right? Uh, yes, um, I think my recommendation is based on the delegation today. You guys seen the staff report between the canteen building. Um, yeah, that's huge. Between that canteen uh, building and the outdoor break, we need uh, Seamus and Kyle's perspective with what water line that was installed last year. Um, just to get their their thoughts, I don't want to speak on their behalf. They dealt with it operationally, and I wasn't in tune with the day today. So I think we need to circle back around to them um, to be able to have their thoughts on it as well as um, the, um, yeah, as well as the uh, outdoor canteen. Yeah, I think that's fair. And yeah, the, the canteen surprised me, um, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a good building and it's in a good location. And um, yeah, but no, I... Like it's one thing I think it's two separate items. I mean, I don't know yeah, if you necessarily yeah. if you want to move forward with supporting the five hundred dollars, yeah. then you know that point I can't tell you how much staff time was dedicated to it. I do definitely know that there was staff time dedicated to it, but I'm I'm not prepared to speak on the outdoor canteen today. And but the, if we make a a motion to have us come back in the staff report, would it be able to come back next time? Because you know, we're getting into fall and winter, and you know, last time we were only what can here. Maybe not canteen, but you know, um, staff. I'm just thinking. So maybe November seventh. Okay, I'm just thinking with the rain, it'd be nice to get that back uh, relative. Well, I think. I mean, if at the council you determine that the staff time needs to be known in order to make a decision on the five hundred dollars, I will do my very best to get it back October thirty first, uh, next Tuesday. Um, but if it's just on the canteen portion, that'll take a bit more oh, yeah. leg work. So that'll be like more like November. So I'll leave it up to you guys. That's your decision. But the, the canteen isn't an urgent one, no. is it? No. no. Um, being involved in, you know, the skating club and we hurt last year and, you know, they did donate money to us, basically what they're asking for. So as a person, you know, as a, they are very community minded and then it's obviously come back and sort of hurt them. So at this point, I would suggest that we, I would like to support the $500 for the outdoor rink. Right. Because I think if I, if we want that to continue, they would need the money. Mm -hmm. But then I guess I understand if it's costing us a lot more in staff, are we then not going to support it? So I'm not really sure where, and where I think the canteen is almost a discussion it's for it's January. January. I think yeah. that's like, there's no urgency in the canteen discussion because it's for baseball season, which doesn't come. But around the outdoor rink, I feel if it's going to happen, I feel we should support it because if it's, it's a free activity um, for people that can't afford to participate in minor hockey or skating. And I know there's public skating, but that's also limited time. So I would like to support the $500, but also if we, if other people feel strongly to have, well, I don't really know what you're asking for staff time to, to see. Yeah, I don't really understand what. No, uh, I just wondered how, how much staff time, how much time staff put into yeah. to doing that. Maybe it's very limited, I don't know. But I, I told you yeah. that I love the outdoor rink. Yeah. fully support it yeah. so i have no issue going for it but it would be nice to know yeah how much from a township perspective yeah like are we putting forth you know five thousand dollars in staff time uh, i don't think we yeah. are but no. um yeah. it'd just be nice to know to know that yeah. number um last year i don't know up. how accurate it would be yeah. because start up we had a you know different things so that. 
Um, there are there are more moving parts there, I think, yeah. last year versus there would be this year. I just kind of wanted a fulsome report, but yeah. I am certainly in support of that. That's why I kind of wanted that to come back. Can they go to the third quarter report? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Is this coming back in? Okay, I'll get Jamie to put in the third quarter. Yeah, no, that'd be, that'd be fine. Okay. And then, uh, you know, have this come back. And then create a report for, like, January for about the canteen because I don't order. feel that first quarter because we don't need that yeah, first as part of easier. budgets and stuff. Yeah. Or do we need it as part of budgets? As I said, those were like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, my concern is that yeah. it, it will definitely, and depending on their operational hours, whether it's going to conflict with our canteen operations here when they were talking about being open for the splash pad and those types of things. So I just we need to have a conversation with them and figure out operationally yeah. what they want to do. Is that going to impact the canteen revenue yeah. coming in? Um, I know they want some to do some upgrades to that ball building. I, I'll talk to Seamus and I'll chat at a management team tomorrow, but and we'll throw that based on that conversation, the outdoor canteen conversation will get added to the appropriate spot and action list. Yeah. We'll get the staff hours allocation in the third quarter report and I'll leave it to y'all to make a decision about the donation. So, my thought is I'd like I kind of like to get all those pieces of information first. People I'm fully in support of, of the outdoor range. Yes. I think it's a great opportunity for kids that can't afford to come in here and see. But everything is costing us more money. So, to be get a sense of yes, we'd love to support with $500, but if we're already donating $1,500 of wages and supplies already, we kind of are, are already making a donation. Yeah, I'm more comfortable with just kind of getting a bit more facts. That's okay. I mean, we are denying this. We just want to delay it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I would call the motion. Was there a motion made? No. no. Uh, Council, so, can, can I make that? I'll, I'll make that a motion that we have um, information regarding the um, the outdoor rink um, be included in the management. The do you want it in the third quarter, like third all of it? Quarter, yeah. Okay. Quarter. Yeah. Uh, and then we will table uh, the C9 request until we have that information back. Okay. Seconder. Councillor Ward. All in favor? I would support that. That motion carried. Council Lays on the courts. Does anybody have anything they would like to bring forward? Uh, Deputy Mayor Burke, of course. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, and Melanie, I apologize, I had this already and I forgot to hit the send button. So I'll just do it verbally and then I'll send it on to you. Um, this from the County Council October 4th report. You have actually that in your agenda, but just to highlight two of them, there was a presentation on Next Generation 911. You might find that very informative and I, I think it's interesting to know where we're going moving forward. And then a presentation on Community Paramedicine, which is a fantastic program. So um, I invite you to look that up. Um, our October 18th meeting, um, waste management is going to add um, the option um, when it comes to dealing with green waste, uh, looking at the food cycler or the countertop composters. Um, when we look at green waste within the county, North Ward is starting that now. We're in the process of that. So that equals five townships who are using that program or the pilot project. Some have completed the pilot project and are, and are expanding that. And then Millbrook, the, the village of Millbrook has pick up now. I believe they go to it goes Babel. Babel. Oh, yeah, I believe they go to Babel. Yeah. So I think this is where the mayor is getting at. They're kind of slow coming to the table when it comes to Greenway. So we'll see. They'll they'll have a report back and we'll go from there. Um uh September 27th chaired the meeting for the autonomy crude resource water protection and we have a, a large group um trend source protection plan and assessment report is being reviewed and we have an upcoming meeting next week um I think all of us were at the um, second annual um Pedro County Ag Roundtable other than Stephanie you weren't feeling well so you look back at and um that was very informative so we're looking forward to planning our our um, third annual one next fall. Um, and I attended the Share the Road campaign announcement at Squirrel Creek Farm Supply. And I do have a link there if you haven't. Um, I, I think it's been shared on social media through the township. Um, but just uh, take a look at that. It's about sharing the road with farm farm equipment and, and the general public. Um, October 16th was our, was our library board meeting. And we reviewed a number of um, well, the financials, number of policies, 
and uh, we already we completed um, the budget, and uh, I believe that will be in the stands at this time. I have it. Okay, and I just wanted one more update. October 26th is coming up on Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. There's a drinking water source protection um, webinar, water wise webinar in Well Care 101. Four of us, five of us in uh, around this table have wells. And it's just something that um, very basic information about the types of construction and maintenance and best practices around around private wells. So you may wish to um, take part in that. And that's everything. Councillor Walsh. Yeah, just one thing, just a reminder from the Special Events Committee that Pumpkin Parade will be on uh, Wednesday, November the 1st, from 5 to 7 p.m. up in Milwaukee up here, um, beside the Splash Pad in the Community Center, and drop off of youth pumpkins, still in one piece, and be at on uh, November the 1st. Uh, at the municipal office, outside like the municipal office, um, at the Illinois Public Library in Westwood, and Aspinall Heights at the mailbox. Okay, so there's three drop off locations that are open from 9 till 3 30, and then we're going to keep it in order at 7 o'clock. Councillor Ward? Uh, yes, just briefly, I just wanted to remind everyone that um, the Cultural and Heritage uh, Committee is hosting an old fashioned holiday event, and uh, we are going to do it on November 18th which is a Saturday, and then the 25th and 26th, which is on the event calendar. We decided to add November 18th because that's going to be the holiday craft sale at the Westwood Library, and we thought that that was a good tie-in, so we decided to add on the Saturday uh, prior to the 25th and 26th, and I'm very pleased that the Norwood District Horticultural Society, the Acidville Norwood Volunteer Firefighters, Mapleview, and uh, who knows who else um, have now committed to helping us with different aspects of the event. Yes. So we will be going to Mapleview. We are doing a library event um, with the Aspen Norwood Library. So looking forward to seeing how this all transpires. Okay. I was down to Hiawatha to the water treatment over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I was right there. Uh, there earlier, they had a session that was uh, started at nine o'clock in the morning that I was at, and the actual ribbon cutting I think was at eleven. But I had left at uh, ten after ten. Um, it was uh, more or less the native way of thinking for the water that they had. Speaking on it, and, uh, it was quite informative. Um, also, there was. Uh, any meetings that you've seen on here that will be on the or has on there, you mentioned that uh, we were talking two and a half to three percent. Um, I think it was 44,000. This is all they plan on building up. And when that's slid amongst all the municipalities involved, ours is like two and a half percent, I think it works out too. So in planning three, we're looking good if all goes well. Um, moving along, any other reports? Anyone? No? Uh, Turksy, uh, CAO Turks Treasures list, Candace. Okay, it's a mouthful. I it's know. a mouthful. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, thank you. So, just to advise Council, the Trans Canada Trail Committee member has sent us that email looking for a couple of members. Uh, Councillor Walsh um, has set forward as well as Mayor Joe Taylor for County South Monaghan. So, those are going to be the two representatives to assist that committee. Uh, so, thank you uh, very much, uh, Councillor Walsh. And for those that had uh, reached out to me, I greatly appreciate it. Um, the murder mystery night, uh, the schedule for this Friday night, um, the tables are, are getting sold, uh, but we still have uh, some tickets available. So if um, you, know, you know anyone, please let them know. It's going to be a great night. We have another uh, practice on Thursday night. It seems to be going uh, very, very well. It's going to be a, a, a good time. Um, we have currently raised... Um, outside of the murder mystery night, so not including the murder mystery night, $120,000 um, in sponsorships for the medical center equipment um, to support the, the doctors. So again, that includes 
uh, cabinetry, um, all of their specified medical equipment that I'm not going to, they sent me the equipment list. I'm not going to profess to be able to relay all that to you, but I know there's an ultrasound machine in there. I knew that one. Um, outside of that, um, I don't have, can't really tell you all of their little things, but all that, um, all that is being sponsored as well as uh, computers and furniture and that sort of thing. Um, I already told you that the medical center staff recruitment has commenced. And one other thing I wanted to chat with you guys about before we can move on to the next part of the meeting is the volunteer and staff appreciation night. Um, staff have um, come forward to me in regards to the approach for 2023. Um, there has been some communication around all of the uh, CAOs in the county. Everyone is reaching out to see what people are still doing post COVID for appreciation night. Um, we are still the only, we are the only municipality that still offers a, a social, um, we'll use the word social with a dance that um, has um, um, alcohol involved. Um, we are the last municipality to do that. Yeah. Um, because we serve wine, et cetera, with our, with our meals. Um, so all of the other ones have moved to a, a lunch, um, simply because it becomes more difficult to be able to get, um, uh, staff participation specifically at the time of year and staff have expressed the, um, interest to potentially have it during the day during lunch with no spouses. <laughs> so, you know, that was Interesting. Um, it, this isn't the first year I've heard it. They reached out uh, and we had a chat about it last year, but um, not sparked by me. Um, another CAO in another municipality actually sent the email around uh, last week and then uh, Pam popped into my office and said, what are we doing? You know, are we moving forward um, with the staff appreciation night? As we know, the fire department attends that evening, but then they also have their own um, separate appreciation night as well. So they attend both. Um, just more looking if you would like to see maybe a staff report back on, on options, but if we're moving forward with the, you know, traditionally what we've always done, um, we kind of need to know, so we need to get the invite out. Um, but it's just start, it just, it's starting to look different. Everything has its time, you know, and everything goes through its time and, you know, the numbers have been dwindling and then it was also brought to my attention and I haven't really given this thought is whether we should be recognizing committee members at the end of the term okay. so um just throwing that out there Foster or deputy member uh yeah no actually it's funny because I was thinking of that that um, bringing volunteers together it's always nice to honor them at the end of the year and you know you I get the term against it and, or sorry, at the end of the term, at the end of the four years, and, and I think that's nice. And as far as it goes for me, whatever the staff wants, I yeah. it, honestly it doesn't matter to me. Um, whatever whatever they want, and um, but I think having you know at the end of the term having something bigger for the volunteers, I, I think would be really really nice. Um, and maybe maybe a thought for the different committees, maybe you know having a you know, hundred dollars or one hundred and fifty dollars, and they could have, you know, a, a little meal at their meeting in December or mm -hmm. something like that. That's just a thought um, for the first three years, and then maybe, maybe once a term, you know, at the yeah. end of the we term, used to do it we that had way. A, we had a mm -hmm. we used to do the end of the term. Yeah, yeah. so just a thought. Mm -hmm used to be that way and then it kind of migrated into getting them a certificate every single year yeah and then it was hard to track as far as who's coming who's going but we do have some committees that are two years that are end in 2024 right so whether um potentially just include if there's if they're not yeah. returning members to ensure that those committees that ended midterm right get right back yeah back. you just got to make sure that piece doesn't get lost i think yeah. change i think change is very good and let's good. face it from the middle of November on everyone is everyone is in the beer hunting Christmas dinners or whatever it is yeah. sometimes it gets to be a lot. So sure. just my thoughts. Uh, if I may uh, yeah. for you there, I also like the idea if staff is uh, bringing it forward to having it during the daytime. I do think that that is a factor for a lot of people. Lunch is nice and you know maybe going forward with different options. You know right. whatever staff. Wants, I think I'd be in full support as well. 
Would you be in support if it was a midday event that the staff was able to close the municipal office for a couple hours to attend so that all Certainly. staff could attend? Yeah. Okay. If it was well communicated, that would obviously. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? So you're good with whatever staff wants you to attend. I'll just let you know when it's going to be then. you They have the budget. Obviously, it was approved in the 2023. And it would budget. be staff only, no spouses, no volunteer recognition. That is, well, I think they, yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm just clarifying. Yeah. So it's yeah. not, Your it's staff, a staff it's appreciation, not a community and staff appreciation, which is what the previous ones were. So they would shift to at the end of the four year term, perhaps there would be something. It would be a separate event. A separate event. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But for the volunteers, and then because it's really fire department, um, staff, and then um, different boards, and the boards and committees, we would feed them a meal to say, you know, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, you know that is a piece. Now whether we want to do that annually and you still separate them and have the opportunity for the committee members to have something, you know, such as your idea of here, you can get together, or maybe we bring them all together, you know, just in a separate, separate separate event it's just it takes i think finding that top that that date that works for everybody at that time of year is becoming more and more challenging and it's a lot of work to pull together for the staff to go there and be recognized when they work and did the entire event and then clean up the entire event and i'm there saying thanks you know um but it's definitely not a big appreciation to some staff and others for sure but um, they just brought it to my attention. It wasn't even on my radar um, until they put it there. So, but I, I think you know, having the committees, whether it's not a November meeting or December meeting, depending on how often they meet, right. it's just they they can do their own little thing, like bring some treats from the bake shop, and you know, have some coffee or something. Because I don't know about anybody else's committee meetings, but we don't get food, so it's just yeah, you know, kind of have your meeting. Okay, you know, a little bit of a social hour after, but I, I do think we do need to recognize at the end of the term. Yes, 100%. Yes. That has to be done. Yeah. So. Which, which committees are two year versus four? The new ones. So, um, the only one I think would be business advisory would be two years because next gen is not running. Okay. Our, whereas all the rest are full council. Uh, special events, I'll have to look. But I know the the boards definitely are cemetery board, library board. I think trails was the was the four. I don't think we made it to. Um, no, I think it's the new one. Business advisory would be my guess. I mean, I can do a quick search here, but but I think ultimately, if it's at the end of the term, you're gonna have to do a call for nominations and applications at the end of that term. And if the same people are appointed back to the committee, or if one person is doesn't return, you just gotta ensure that at the end of the term the recognition event is held, that that person, yeah, person gets included in the invite list. Yeah. yeah. And then we can just support, support, give something towards the fire department's event that they hold separately anyway. So then, so the, and I believe the mayor attends that. They do get the mayor gets invited to that every year. Nobody else. So the firefighters is not part. The firefighting is not part of the staff lunch. No, it has been tradition. They've always held their own separate thing. Okay. Yeah. And they do do that. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and so at that event, you would. So give the certificates for the firemen there. for the firemen that have done like ten years, twenty years. You know they do yeah, the yeah. recognition, yeah. and then at the staff we would do the same. Those that have, at the luncheon or whatever they decide they would like to do, five year, ten year. Yeah. I know we have one staff member that's at thirty this year. So, huh. um, all and, right. Uh, any more general business? Okay. Uh, or treasures list. Sorry. Do you have anything else? My time, I think we're on. Okay, general business we're on to. Sorry, uh, Councillor Board. Uh, yes, I just have one uh, mention. I was talking to the uh, Norwood and District Horticultural Society this morning, and they have decided to put out and adopt a barrel for their winter holiday. You know how they decorate the main street in Norwood, 
And so they have decided they need some help um, doing this project. And they had put out something that maybe adopt a barrel for each of those holiday barrels to help them out because they are getting to be an older organization and they need the assistance. Yeah. So I thought I would throw that out. Um, we are actually throwing together something next Thursday to help do some of the roof and things that they're going to put around the township. And if anybody would like to come out, I will send everyone the details, if that's okay, after the meeting. Yeah. Um, any assistance would be great because I think those holiday barrels look lovely through the season. Yeah. Any other general business from then, uh, Deputy Mayor Bird? Um, a couple of things. Um, in the Ontario News, they they had an announcement of the own OMPF funds. Do you know how much they received? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do. I'm going to see it in budget, but um, okay. it's it's like reduction, as you can. It normally is what we're seeing. Yeah, I have it. You can do it. Sorry, it's trying to open the budget spreadsheet. Good evening, Senator. I'm just curious to know what our number was for coming here. 647. 647? Mm -hmm. And just one more thing. Um, you've likely all seen it. Um, there's a warden for the day contest that the county is uh, is doing. And uh, I just sent that to the guidance counselor at the um, high school yeah. because she was here, the kids were here. So I sent that off to her. So she was sending it out to the classes that were here and to um, some of the, the teachers in applicable subjects as well. So I don't know, it'd be kind of neat if somebody from Aspen on the road won that contest. They just have to do a 60 second video as to think why they would want to do it or what they do or something like that. So yeah, send that off. Anybody else? Uh, well, uh, just one quick question for consideration is our November 14th will be budget adoption. I see the Zoom meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any consideration that we get with that being person? I just think it's an opportunity if people do want to um, um, sit in on it with them. Because the way that it is but it does also say that it is in the millennium. Mm -hmm. So an error was made in the public meeting notice. It should only say virtual meeting. It shouldn't state the millennium room. My only concern is, is I'm just asking if we could maybe hold and pause on that um, decision because we have Peter Simisco from Watson and Associates coming to the public meeting that day um, for the development charges and the development charge study. Um, and he picked that meeting a month ago uh, based on the fact of his schedule that it was virtual. So he wouldn't be driving in from London. Um, so we would have to ensure that he's able to attend that meeting in person unless we can try to live stream him in. So that's yeah, that's 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 the thought could be could we do a, a hybrid approach that day then? It's live for budget, but in the case of Hamlet, and I get it because it's, it's savings of travel for our township as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and hand driving is being able to zoom him in at the beginning of the meeting or in the meeting, whatever would possibly work for his schedule. Could, could we, his part of the meeting, could we have a, a Zoom link so we, if we're all here in case we're not able to put it up? Could we all? Yeah. Because the only thing that we run, run into is audio trouble, right? So the okay. that's always because there's no speaker audio system mm -hmm. here. So everything runs through my so remember Kyle participated in the meeting remotely when he wasn't well and we had him, I could see him on my computer, you guys could hear him. Um that's essentially um what it would be. So I need to reach out to him, make sure we're compliant with the act. Um everything's Good, whether we have to raise you another notice, how many days we have to give that notice, because it's all spelled out in the act. So um, I'm sure it'll be fine. I just need it left with me because I had no idea that that was even being considered. So I just need to do some light work on my end. Okay, thank you. Uh, one other thing, November 28th, is it, that we had a meeting? So there was discussion on whether you guys would to, to cancel that meeting based on the action list. I don't 
So you are going to be. I won't be there on the 28th of the month. Oh. If you want to move it ahead a week, you can. I'm not before. here the week before. You're not here the week. We're comfortable though. We're and you're, you wouldn't have. You don't need that meeting in the next time space. So that, morning, that's too good. That's thank you for picking up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. staff needs just a bit of time. They can't get an agenda out. My so the we first week I'm not and get it gone. Like it's just not. It's not. It's not reasonable. <laughs> I don't know, Mel. Oh, <laughs> <they're okay. laughs> I got a little more faith in you, Mel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, so you okay, so we need a motion to cancel the meeting. Yeah. So I'll put forward a motion that the meeting November twenty eighth scheduled for November twenty eighth will be canceled. Seconder, uh, Councillor War. All in favor? Motion's carried. Sorry. Yes, that's fine. Um, the never mind, I'll look it up first. What day is this no. meeting? Is says November December. 20th. So on this, it says December 12th, but in the management action list, it's the 13th of December. It doesn't matter, it's whatever the Tuesday, whatever is. the Tuesday is, is. Okay, is. That's fine. Yeah, I just noticed there was a difference. So it would be December 12th, it is the 12th. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Uh, session again. We have a motion to go into closed session. Please uh, move by Councillor Hodge Creeds, second by Councillor Walsh. All in favor? Motion's carried. And okay, we need a motion to go forward with the job description. Um, so we're going to rise from close with a report, and that report is going to be that the Council of the Township of Aspadale Norwood. Approves the job description for the CAO clerk and the treasurer and directs the mayor and councillor Ward to release the job description with the appropriate ad to the OMAA, AMCTO, AMO, and MFOA. Movers, uh, councillor Walsh, councillor Ward, discussion, all in favor. Motion's carried. And moving on now. Bylaws. Bylaws. Being a bylaw to amend bylaw number 2009-080 as amended, being a bylaw to regulate the use of land and the use and erection of buildings and structures within the township of Aspinall, Norway, be read for a second and third time in number bylaw 2023-48. Moved by Deputy Mayor Burke. Seconder, Councillor Hodgecrees. All in favor? Motion's carried. Being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Espinel, Norwood, held October 24, 2023, be read for a second and third time in numbered bylaw 2023 49. Councillor Walsh, Councillor Hodge Greaves, all in favor? Motion. Motion's carried. And the future meeting schedule down there, mine's November 28th. Mm -hmm. And we'll chat about November 14th on October 31st. All right. Motion to adjourn. Moved by Deputy Mayor Bird. Councilor Moore. All in favor? Thank you.